All right, we're going to be looking back at the Blue Jackets week. Uh, if you missed my update video, this is how I'm going to be doing uh, Blue Jackets and Cavs recaps from now on, starting with the Blue Jackets coming up first. Uh, before we get into the actual games the Blue Jackets played, I do want to mention that both uh, Juracek and Svozil had very good World Juniors for Czechia, uh, with Juracek earning uh, top defenseman of the tournament honors. So that's really good for the Blue Jackets as far as their prospects go. Obviously, just because they had a good World Juniors tournament doesn't automatically translate into that they're going to be superstars in the NHL when they get here eventually. But uh, yeah, that that is definitely some good some good news as far as you know there there is help coming along the way. There is a cavalry for this defense that's been in disarray for the last couple years now so hopefully uh, they can keep that momentum going and your check and Savoza will be on the blue line uh, sooner than maybe we, even we anticipated so getting to the actual Blue Jacket games that happened uh, the first two games with uh, against the Senators in the first game against the Capitals. I feel like they kind of played out in a very similar kind of fashion. A uh, solid and competitive first period by the Columbus Blue Jackets that they can go into the locker room uh, with their heads held high and maybe try to, trying to build some momentum off of it. Followed by just 40 minutes of getting routed by the other team on their way to a loss by four goals. The Ottawa game ending 4 nothing, and the Capitals game ending 2-6. Both of those obviously in losses. At least that latter game featured some Blue Jacket goals uh, from Johnny Goudreau and Gavin Bayreuther. Uh, but Gavin Bayreuther actually had a second goal that was called back for offsides because of course it was in that Capitals game with Emil Bemstrom getting assists on both of those goals. And I do think that despite the uh, poor showing from the Blue Jackets in those first two games, I thought Emil Bemstrom has been noticeable so far in his second call-up. Uh, hopefully he finally builds some momentum on this run. It's been really start and stop with him for whatever reason, whether it be inconsistent play or bad injury luck, just whatever. Hopefully this is the time where an Emil Bemstrom can kind of uh, gel with the lineup and find a place. And he's definitely gonna, going to be getting an opportunity now that he's you know, he, he's here and he's, he's playing pretty well and the, the lineup has been devastated by injuries as well. So he's getting an opportunity to uh, finally stick in the NHL and kind of justify why the front office was so hesitant to put him on waivers in the first place. And even when they do, his, even when they do call him up, it's on emergency call up so they can send him back down without waivers should they have to. Uh, then we heard after the, at that Capitals game, we heard some reports of the Blue Jackets introducing a more physical practicing style. Brad Larson kind of doing a lot of battle drills saying that uh, he's no longer worried about the rest for this team because uh, quite frankly, even with rest, they haven't been playing very well at all. So it's going to be a very competitive practice style, very physical. Uh, but it seems to have yielded some immediately positive results. The back-to-back -back weekend, weekend matinee games happened. And I thought both of them were pleasantly surprising as far as how competitive the Blue Jackets were. Uh, they even managed to get two points against the Canes in the shootout. Uh, thanks to tremendous efforts by Corpus Salo and Kirill Marchenko. Kirill getting his first career hat trick in this one and he's really been on a roll ever since getting called up to the NHL I've been very uh, very impressed with Marchenko uh, in his performances throughout the when he's been called up this month in December and now into January he gets his hat trick obviously and he actually has the most goals uh, scored on the Blue Jackets team since his call up so he's obviously been on a roll he's beating expectations and he also scored in the shootout along with Line A and Kent Johnson, who Kent Johnson had a filthy move to beat uh, Ranta on that goal there. And that's how they got the they got two points out of the Canes, which is definitely uh, more than we probably expected heading into that game. But yeah, Kirill Marchenko was amazing in that game. Corpus Salo was also uh, tremendous. And the second game against the Capitals for this week in D.C., probably one of the most solid games the Blue Jackets have played in general despite getting shut out. Uh, they heavily outshot the Capitals, and they were pretty defensively sound. Washington not really able to get a whole lot going at, uh, besides the, that first goal, which was off of a bad bounce off a of Blue Jackets defenseman either way early on in the game. It was really nice to see Elvis getting a good showing in. I think this is what might have been his first game where he didn't, where he started the game and didn't give up uh, three goals or more so that was definitely a nice improvement even though again it didn't get the result that you wanted but the effort was there the performance was there sometimes you just get goalied and, and Darcy Kemper was uh, amazing for Washington in that in that second game there uh, the only thing that, that bugged me about this game uh, just recently was that the fourth line saw more ice time than Johnny Goudreau's line which doesn't really feel like a recipe for success especially if you're trying to get a goal I might be able to see it if you're trying to maybe defend a lead or you know got you know control possession a little more or make sure you're tightening up your defense but if you really need to get a goal out there uh, then the fourth line isn't might not be the uh, the way to go there but hey uh, Lars has been using them as kind of uh, 
as kind of the default crutch line is like, hey, we'll just go out there and get some momentum. He'd been using that all season. I'm not necessarily sure if I uh, see where that's going or what that plan is, but he's the head coach and I'm not. So what I'm, I mean, I can just kind of talk about it and say that's that's not good, but I guess I'm just kind of along for the ride as far as that goes. Uh, so I think overall, it wasn't a great week as far as getting good results. Obviously, you lost uh, three out of the four games, but I do feel like the last two games over the weekend, it did show the kind of effort that we want to see from the team regardless of all the uh, lineup stuff because I, I know the lineup isn't optimal and they're hurt and that's going to translate to maybe more losses than we would have liked heading into the season but just the the constant getting blown out and outworked as well by the other team is unacceptable uh, it has been for a little while now and hopefully with the change of pace to practice they're finally starting to maybe get that message across a little bit and hopefully we'll see more of the last couple of games throughout later on in the season because again I, I get that the lineup isn't uh, ideal and you're going to get more losses and that's going to you know it, it takes out a lot of the ceiling of this team but you know just getting the team looking disinterested compared to the other team across the ice from them is getting a bit old so hopefully these last two games were an indication of how the Jackets are going to uh, put themselves on the ice and their effort moving forward and that's all that's all I can really ask for this team at this point is just try to put in a solid effort uh, try to give maybe try giving the guys like Kirill Marchenko and Kent Johnson who are showing that they can have flashes of of having really good play maybe get them some more ice time and try to uh, develop them a little more that now that you're pretty much you're you're done you're not making the playoffs so you might as well uh, try to develop Kent Johnson and Marchenko a little bit maybe get them a little more uh, experience in clutch situations. Cole Sillinger there as well as another uh, very young player who's kind of going through a, a major sophomore slump at the moment. Hopefully you get those, maybe get those guys in some more game time situations. And I, I, honestly, I honestly don't think Cole Sillinger wouldn't, I honestly think that Cole Sillinger might kind of benefit from a, a stint in the AHL, but maybe they, they, they worry about that's going to kill his confidence or something. I, I'm not sure what to do there. Either way, you know, you just you know, get, get the young guys some development time, try to play hard, and that's really all you can expect from this Blue Jackets team after uh, the injuries and just also just some guys just underperforming and stuff like that. Yeah, that, that's all I can say for this week as far as the Blue Jackets coverage. Uh, well, I'll see you next week. I'll